turn on video. I think I've got the bandwidth this morning. Yeah, I can see you just fine. Okay. There ah, there you go. You can see me. Fortunately, the people won't see my uh, messy closet in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome everybody. This is the TDD report for the week ending November 12th. And I brought my friend Rob, also known as RC62 on YouTube, on to talk about a particular article I read. And Navy Thomas actually beat me to the punch on this, not even knowing about it. He talked about it in one of his rides about the, um, they, they, what they do is they say it's involved with SETI, but I think only they're just using that title in the article to kind of get more views. What they're proposing is a scientist from Princeton, another one from Harvard, is proposing that we look for, instead of radio signals, we look for artificial light signals from other planets. And I wanted to bring Rob in about this, too, because I think they kind of trivialize it in the articles about the amount of expense this is going to be and just how um, physically difficult this is going to be to try to detect artificial life on other worlds. There may be anywhere from 4 to 60, 70 light years away or even further. So I wanted to bring Rob in because he has a little bit of experience in amateur astronomy, too, and just uh, ask him about what are we talking about here. The article shows an artist's concept of what you would think if a person built a, a super large telescope and looked at a planet and saw something like the Earth at night with the lights and things. People have probably seen this on Google and other places like that where they show the Earth at night and you see the city lights spread out all over the continents and stuff like that. They show that as part of the article off to the site as an artist's concept. Now, are, are we talking about something that they'd be able to do that any time in the near future? Uh, so, Chuck, I, I did not see the specific article you're referencing. Yeah. Uh, but I do kind of know what you're talking about. Uh, I did see some articles on, on where they uh, where SETI got refinanced. Mm -hmm. I guess they, they were pretty much shutting them down. Yeah. And uh, uh, they, they refinanced private financing, and they're trying to look for lights. And, and I, I kind of read through the article, and I'm a little bit skeptical. Um, on one hand, if, if we were looking for other humans, uh, in other words, a, a world similar to our own, maybe they'd be able to see it. Maybe they would be able to detect the, uh, the artificial lights. But the whole thing is predicated on the life forms being like us, having evolved along similar paths and have the similar type of technology we do. I mean, for all we know, aliens may not have eyes at all, or their eyes may be sensitive to other wavelengths, and their light sources may be completely natural. Uh, it, it, it may be a a wavelength that our eyes would not see, our scopes would not specifically detect as something artificial. So I, I have my doubts. Now, now I, I do believe that the odds are there, there are other life forms out there. Um, then you get into the debate of, well, if there are other life forms out there, are there intelligent life forms out there? I think that will be even harder to detect because what defines intelligence? The ability to use tools? We, we consider dolphins to be intelligent creatures, yet they have no use for tools or, or communications of anything other than their sonar back and forth to each other, so they talk to each other. But uh, who's to say what, what aliens would evolve like? They could be super intelligent, uh, but have no, no relevance to what our te technology is like. Oh, Does that make any sense? Yeah, I, I can see the point, too. That was something that I didn't even think about, and I'm glad I brought you on to talk about that, because now that you brought that up, suppose we were, um, our eyes were able to detect uh, infrared light very easily. Our artificial light usage would go way down, because anything that has any kind of a heat signature at all, we would see nice and clearly with infrared eyes. So why would we even turn on any kind of artificial lighting? Um, I exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I was just mostly thinking about the fact of how many photons are we actually going to be talking about receiving from a planet that's, say, even as close as 40 light years away, because you as an amateur astronomer know, just like I did when I was looking at the sky and stuff like that, sometimes stuff so far away may only send a handful of photons our way, so how much are we even going to be able to detect and analyze in the first place, even if we do get those photons from those planets? So I, I think it is possible to, to detect the photons. I mean, yeah. we, we could develop equipment that's sens enough, sensitive enough to do that. It would yeah. be very expensive, but it's possible. But again, you're looking for a very minute possibility. Yeah. Uh, again, those, those, the things we're looking for may not be the right things to look for. Yeah, yeah, that's true. 
I think more or less they're, they're, they're putting this forth. Now, I went onto the SETI website themselves, and I guess this is just a proposal to SETI, but SETI isn't actually pursuing this as an active plan right now because on SETI Oregon, their latest uh, information there, they don't really list anything about this article. So I'm, I think more or less it's these two scientists proposing this for a different direction for SETI. And even Seth Shostak himself that's uh, in charge of it has said that it's almost getting to the time to where they're kind of scratching their head about, are we even going to pick up with anything with radio waves? And the SETI article that I was reading, well, not the SETI article, but the Cambridge article about the Harvard scientists and the Princeton scientists actually were saying that, you know, we ourselves are going dark as far as radio signals. When we used to, in the old days, have a lot of million watt and half a million watt towers, we were broadcasting a lot of power out in the outer space, whereas now people are basically doing their communication through satellite broadcasts focused at the Earth, we're doing things through cable fiber optics. I mean, pretty soon, if we keep progressing the same way, we're not going to be putting out much of a radio signal out in outer space at all. Very true. And, and even when we were pumping out those megawatts of uh, radio energy, um, from my understanding, they don't go that far and could not be detected that far. Far being relative when we're talking space. Um, whereas the idea of using the photons makes a little more sense because they travel further and, and are detectable from a further distance. But again, I, I'm not sure we're looking for the right things. And what those right things are, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, the, my other question is, well, while as, as a curious human being, I would really love to, to see proof that there's something else out there. Uh, and again, I, I do firmly believe the odds are that there, there is something else out there. But what are we going to do with that knowledge when we have it? Uh, is somebody like uh, a Dick Cheney going to decide that we need to build some Star, Star Wars weapons to go kill these aliens because they uh, present a threat to us? Uh, would we ever even be able to truly contact them in any way, shape, or form? The distances we're talking about are so enormous, unless the aliens or we are able to develop technologies that would basically let us jump time or travel in excess of the speed of light, We'll never see them. We'll never be able to communicate with them. We'll never get there. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. It, 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 there's a lot of variables involved. Uh, I think it's really interesting. I'd like to know uh, the truth of the matter, but uh, I don't know if it's worth all the money that's being thrown at it when there are so many things in this world that really need to be taken care of. Yeah. I don't know. I'm curious, but, you know. I think human psychology being what it is, if you notice, uh, Hollywood presents it kind of the same way too, but uh, human psychology being the way we are, we tend to equate ugly things with being bad and beautiful things with being good, and if the aliens don't quite fit our idea of what we think is attractive or beautiful, are we going to judge them based on that too and you know, want to fight with them rather than be friends with them, whereas if they look a lot like us, are they going to be somebody we're going to like because they look a lot like us? Correct. Uh, I don't know if you can see my uh, T-shirt here. It's yeah. called Alien Eyes. Uh, I, I've had this a little over 20 years. Uh, it was from okay. a Save the Children campaign. But I thought it was appropriate for our call today. Yeah. But it's uh, it's a little spaceman floating around out there and all these aliens with their big, bulging eyes. Oh, oh uh, cool. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you've uh, ever seen the uh, the show V. Oh, yes. I watched the, both versions, the old version and the new version. Which is very interesting. You get this really beautiful queen alien, and, and everybody's awed by her. But really underneath, she's really something horrible and terrible. Yeah, a lizard, yeah. So, yeah. Which, which no, no, uh, no uh, demeaning people that uh, really like lizards, because I imagine in their own ways they're beautiful to other lizards, and even some human beings that uh, choose to use lizards as pets. But yeah, we are very much appearance-oriented as human beings. Very much so, very much so. Um, but like I say, I, 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 don't, I don't think, uh, unless, unless we can go faster than the speed of light or learn how to jump time, I don't think there's very much chance we'll ever meet uh, our, our brothers out in the yeah. universe. That, I, I just don't think it'll ever happen. And that may make it just as frustrating, too, because we finally detect that there is somebody out there using artificial light, and then they're 40 light years away, so it's not like we're going to be talking back and forth, like, hello, and then they answer, I mean... 40 light years for communication one way, 40 light years for communication the other way, it's pretty much a lost cause and maybe a lot of frustration. Very true, very true. And, and when, you're, when you're talking these vast distances, uh, if we do detect a civilization, that even if it's by detecting the light rays, uh, the artificial light, 
you got to figure over over these distances that civilization could have ended long ago and we're just now seeing that light hitting us because it took so long to get here yeah yeah very true they might not even be alive to answer us if we send a signal their way so exactly well, well thank you for being on the show rob i really appreciate it i think that makes it a little bit more interesting when we can bring some extra thought in on the show well thanks chuck i, I was uh, extremely honored when you invited me to uh to be on the tdd Hey, one of these days I hope you'll get down towards Florida and we can meet up. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd really sounds... love to meet you in person sometime. Oh, and one uh, shameless plug, too. The TDD report is all about shameless plugs, especially for friends. Solar Bear Challenge, I'm going to put the link down to the bottom of this, too. Solar Bear Challenge, don't forget, if for some reason you don't feel like participating or you can't participate in the Polar Bear Challenge, Solar Bear Challenge is a great thing. I'm going to participate in it a little bit myself, too. you got to be official in one or the other. You can't get... Um, Prizes, rewards, or whatever we choose, or stickers in both as far as official. But choose one or the other and participate if you feel like it. It's a great, great challenge. Yeah, thanks for the plug there. Uh, <laughs> Gogosaur hopefully will do a great job hosting yeah. this year. Yep. And I'm hoping I can better win back that trophy. I kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, take care, Rob, and I will uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, Chuck. Okay. Take care, man. Bye-bye.